Forms are a fairly common feature you're going to see on many sites. However, sometimes forms can be fairly tedious to build and can require quite a bit of logic, especially for validation. In this video, I want to walk you through how to easily set up an elegant looking form with validation using Nuxt and Nuxt UI. Are you ready? Let's get started. Alright, so to get started, I've already went ahead and created a new Nux project, and I have that open here inside of VS Code. The only setup I've done so far is inside of the app.view file, I removed the starter components and replaced this with the Nux page component. And then inside of the directory, I've created a pages folder, and then we just have an index.view file here, which currently is empty. So to get started, we're going to need to install a couple things into our application. The first thing is going to be Nux UI, which is what we're going to be using to create our form. And we'll also be installing a package called Zod, which is going to provide us with TypeScript for schema validation to go ahead and validate our form. So here on the Nux UI homepage, we have a snippet we can use to install this module and then add it to our Nux application. So we can copy this and then back inside of our project, we can open up our terminal and we can just paste that in like this. And once that finishes installing, you should then see you have the Nux UI module added within your Nux config. So now that we have that installed, what we want to do is also install Zod. So we'll go over to the Zod documentation and we can select on the installation section right here. And then we can just copy this command right here called npm install Zod. And we can paste that inside of our terminal. Now, when we install Nux UI, we also get access to the color mode module. Now, by default, what this module is going to do is set our application to either a dark mode or a light mode based on your system preference. Now, for the sake of this video, I want to make sure that everyone has the same experience. So what we're going to do is we can define the color mode property inside of our Nux config, and then we can set our preference to light. So what we can do is just copy this. And then here inside of our Nux config, we can just paste it in like this. And this is going to ensure that no matter what our system preference is, our application is going to be in a light mode. And once you have that set, if you're still noticing your application is in a dark mode, then what you can do is go to your application, open up your console, and then you just want to remove the Nux color mode item from local storage. And that should resolve it. And now your application should be in a light mode once you do a refresh. So now that we have all that set up, let's begin to create our form using some of the components available to us within Nux UI. So we're going to be using the form component, which essentially is going to be a wrapper for our entire form. And if we scroll down here in the documentation, they have a pretty simple example of how this works. So we have our form component right here, which we can define things like our schema and our state and some classes if we want to. And then we can also listen for the submit event and handle our submission. And within the form component, we can then define all the fields that we want to have in that particular form. And each one of these form fields are going to get stored in a component called form group. And then within the form group component, we can then just define our input component, which we're going to use to capture the user's input. So back here inside of our project, let's begin to set up our form. So one thing that I did forget to mention is if you have never used Nux UI before, then under the hood, Nux UI actually uses Tailwind CSS to style all of its components. So when you install Nux UI into your project, you actually get access to Tailwind CSS. And we're going to be using that to apply a couple styles here within our project. So on our div that is wrapping our page here, we're going to apply a couple classes. So first off, we're going to set the max width on here to the screen size of small. We're going to push everything into the center with a class of MX auto, and then also apply some padding on the top and bottom with a class of PY10. And within our div wrapper, we're just going to define our uform component, and we're going to have an error here until we define our state for this component, which for the moment we're not going to do. We're just going to set up our structure first. So on the form component, we're going to apply a few classes. So first off, we're going to set a background color, which this will be a custom color of F1, F1, F1. And then we want to apply some padding around all sides. So we'll give it the class of P10. And then we also want to add some border radius. So we're going to add the class of rounded MD. And then we want to space all the elements within this form with a class of space, Y, and 3. So within this form, we'll give it a title and then we can just apply a text class on here. So we'll say 4XL and then the title will just say Nux form. And then beneath our heading, we can then begin to create our form field. So remember, we can do this with a component called uform group. 
And on this component, we'll want to define a few props. So the first thing we want to define is going to be a name. And this is going to be used later on when we start to perform some validation. So this is very important to add. So we're going to give this a name of first name. And then we can also provide it a label, which is going to be displayed on the form. So then again, this will be called first name. And then lastly, we can define a size that we want this form group to be. So by default, the size on a form group is set to small. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to large. And then inside of our form group, we just want to define our input component. And this will be the structure for all of our form fields here inside of this form. So what I'll do really quickly here is just go ahead and create the three additional form fields that we're going to need for our form. And there we go. We now have all of our form fields defined for our form. Now, one change I do want to make is on this last form field right here, because we are going to be accepting a age, which is a number, we want to update the input type from a default type of text to the type of number. And the last thing that we want to add to our form is a button so that a user can submit it. So let's add the button component and we can do this with you button. And this accepts a few props. So the first thing we're going to do is apply class and we're going to give it some margin on the top. So we'll say MT3. Then we want to apply the block attribute to make this button component span the entire width of our form. And then we also want to give it a label and this label value will be submit. And then we also want to change the type of this button to be submit as well. And since you went ahead and defined the size on our form group to large, for consistency purposes, we can also apply a size to our button, and then we'll just set this to large as well. And then here inside of our application with very minimal effort, we already have a very nice looking form. Now, before we continue on, if you are interested in learning more about Nuxt, I am working on a new course called Learn Nuxt, which is currently available in early access. In this course, you'll learn how to build modern applications using Nuxt, and you'll gain a practical and realistic approach to developing production-ready applications. So if you enjoy my content here on YouTube and my teaching style, then be sure to head over to learnnux.dev and you can find the link down below in the description. And you can actually preview a few of the lessons from the course. And for this video only, I'll also be providing an exclusive discount that you can also find in the description that you can use at checkout to save you some extra money if you do happen to enroll in the course. So now that we have our form created, the next thing we want to do is set up our state to track the value of each one of our form fields. So to do this, what I'm going to do to save some time is just paste in the form state. So what we'll have is a variable called form state, and then we'll set this equal to a reactive object. And in this reactive object, we'll have a property for each one of our form fields. So we have first name, last name, email, and then the age. And then on the form component, what we want to do is define the state prop. And then what we're going to bind this to is our form state that we just went ahead and created. And this will also go ahead and clear that error that we had on our form component. And to capture the value that the user inputs into our form fields, we just want to apply a V model to each one of our U input components. And then we just want to reference our form state. And then we want to reference for this first form field, the first name. And we'll want to apply this V model to each one of our form fields, which I'll do off camera to speed things up. Now, when a user submits this form, we want to be able to handle that form submission. So to do this, we can listen for the submit event here on our uform component. And remember, since we have this button with the type of submit, whenever we click on this, it's going to fire the submit event. So what we want to do is whenever we hear this event, we want to run a function, which we're going to create, and we'll call this form submission. And then beneath our state, we can go ahead and create this function. So we'll say form submission. And then inside of here, this is going to accept a param of the event that we're going to get when we go ahead and submit our form. And then what we can do for now is just do a simple console.log of this event. So here inside of our application, let's go ahead and test this out. So we can just pass the first name of test. We'll do test again for the last name, say test at yahoo.com and we'll just say 27 like this. And if we hit submit, we should see in our console we had that submit event. And if we expand this, in here we have a data object, which is actually going to be all the data from the form that we just went ahead and submitted. So now that we know our form is working correctly, the last thing that we want to implement is our form validation, and we can easily do this with Zod. Now at the moment with our form, if we just click on submit with none of our form fields filled out, you can see this is going to submit. But if we take a look inside of our event and then our data, you can see that each one of these fields is undefined, which you more than likely don't want. You'd want to make sure that every form field is filled out prior to submitting.
So to handle this, what we want to do is inside of our file, we first want to import Zod. And then from here, what we want to do is we want to use Zod to essentially create a schema for how exactly we want our form to be validated. So what we'll do is we'll create a new variable and we'll call this form schema. And we'll set this equal to the Zod instance that we just imported. And on here, we have access to the object method. Now inside of here, what we want to do is essentially we want to clone our form state, except we want to define exactly how we want that state to be validated inside of this object. So let's go through this field by field. So the first field that we want to target is going to be our first name. And for this one, what we're going to do is we just want to ensure that we have a value and that it's a string. So what we can do is reference Zod. And then on here, we can reference a method or a validator called string. And this is just going to ensure that our first name is in fact a string. So if we save that and then we head down to our form, what we can do is we can actually bind a schema prop and then we can set this equal to our form schema. And now that we have the schema set up for the first form field, if we leave this empty and we click on submit, what you're gonna see happen is the input or form field is gonna go into an error state. And when we attempt to submit a form that has an error, the form submission function is not going to fire. As you can see, we're not actually getting that logged out event when we submit our form. So if we then just enter in a name here, like John, for example, that is valid and we click on submit, you can see now our actual form will be submitted because we no longer have an error. And what's really nice about Nux UI, as you can see, is we didn't have to go ahead and set up any of the air state stuff from a UI perspective within our form. Nux UI is going to take care of all that for us. All we need to do is tell what we actually want to validate within our form schema. And if you want to add any additional air handling outside of the default behavior, you can listen for the air event on the form itself. So here in the documentation, they have a pretty good example of what you might want to use this for. So whenever they have an air, what's happening is they're going to reference the element that has the air. Then they're going to automatically focus into that element that has the air. And then they're going to scroll into the view of that element itself. And this is something that might be helpful if you have a larger form with many form fields where when you actually go to submit it, a lot of the form fields are out of the view of the page. So once you submit it, if you have an error at the very top of the form, it'll go ahead and scroll into the view of that element that has the error. And what's also really nice about Zod is there is a handful of string specific validations that we can also apply within our form. So say, for example, we want to only have a max character uh, count of five, we can just copy this. And then inside of our application, we can just add this on the end here and we can say max of five. And without doing anything else, we can head back over to our form. And if we type in something longer than five, so we'll just say hello world like this and we hit submit, you can see we're going to get an error message saying that the string must contain at most five characters. And if you want it, what you can also do is pass in your own custom message. So we can just say this is a custom message. And now inside of our form, if we did the same thing, we can just say hello world once more and we hit submit. You're going to see now instead of having that default message, we can now insert our own custom error message. So let's continue setting up the rest of our form schema. So for the last thing, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that this is also a string and then we'll do our email. And we'll also want to ensure that our email is a string as well. However, we can also use an additional validation here to check that it is in the format of an email by using the email validation method. And in here we can pass a custom message as well. And lastly, we have the age. So this one will be a number. And then an additional validation we can do on this is to ensure that the number is positive. So now that we have our form schema defined, the last thing that we need to fix is this TypeScript error that we have here on our param of event within the form submission. So to properly type this, what we want to do first off is we want to create a new type and we're going to call this schema. And what we want to set this equal to is first off, we want to reference our Zot instance. And then on here, we can access something called output. Now within here, what we can do is we can say type of and then we can reference our form schema. Now to properly type out our event param here inside of our function, what we want to do is actually import a type that Nux UI provides us for this event parameter from our form submission. And this is called form submit event. So what we can do is then reference our form submit event type here for our event parameter. 
But what we also want to do is pass in our type of schema to let the event know that this is what it is expecting from our event when we submit our form. So within here, we can just define schema like this, and that should fix our TypeScript error within our function. Now back here inside of our application, let's test out the form validation. So if we leave all of our form fields blank to begin with and we click on submit, you should see initially we're going to get that all these are required because we didn't enter in any values. And if we start to fill out some of these form fields, we should see them get validated when we focus out of them. So first off, if we just say John and we tab out, you can now see that this field is now validated. Then we can just say test like this and then that'll be valid. And if we go to the email and we say test at one, two, three, you can see that this is not a valid email. So we're still going to see an error state. It went ahead and revalidated. So what we can do is just say test at yahoo.com. And now that's valid. And then for the age, if we type in something like one, two, three, four, that should be valid. But if we give it a negative number like negative one, you can see we're going to give it, uh, get an error because this is not greater than zero. So that is going to prevent the user from entering in a negative value. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up here for this video. Hopefully you did find it helpful and you can now see how easy it is to create forms with Nuxt and then Nuxt UI along with Zod for the validation. Now what we cover here in this video is just an introduction to actually setting up a basic form with Nux UI and then Zod for the validation. There is a lot more customization that you can do along with Nux UI and there's a ton of different validations that you can do with Zod. So hopefully you go ahead and explore the documentation for Nux UI and Zod as I think this is a really great way and easy way to go ahead and create forms for your Nuxt applications. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.